Nearly every industry in the world has a trade show. You have car shows, electronic shows, even comics have their own trade shows. But here in Jordan for the last 14 years, in huge tents in the middle of the desert, they have a massive trade show for war. It's called the Special Operations Forces Exhibition, or SOFEX for short, and it's hosted by Jordan's King Abdullah II, one of America's only allies in the Middle East. I wanted to know exactly what was for sale and just who was selling it at the world's largest special forces supermarket. But I'm a magazine guy, not a gun guy. So I brought along an ex-Marine and an Iraq war vet, Matt Ruskin, to help me sort through all this stuff. It's interesting because when you walk through security and you come to this, it's sort of like a trade show out in the middle of the desert. And the first thing you see are like any other trade show advertising. But here it's like F-16 with sniper targeting pod, the Hellfire missile, the Javelin missile. It's crazy. It's the first thing you see. And all this advertising is aimed at what audience? Generals. So we're here at the beginning at Sofex. They're going to have the keynote speeches. As you can see, there's pretty much every general in the world here. It's crazy. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to Jordan and to Sofex. With the 349 exhibitors and more than 300 delegates from around 85 countries. Special operation capabilities are vital to the battle against global terrorism. With your leadership, insights, and efforts, victory will be ours. The arms industry is estimated anywhere between $350 billion to $500 billion a year. One of the largest industries in the world, and these are all the guys the military advisors, the generals who come here to buy weapon systems. Where are you guys from? Jordan. Jordan? The hometown boys. Where are you guys from? Togo. Togo? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Tanzania. Very good guys. Lebanon. Lebanon. Marhaba. 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 <laughs> when I was a kid, they used to talk about the military industrial complex. Well, this is it right here. The business of war. All the generals coming with billions upon billions of dollars of taxpayer money to buy weapons to fuck shit up. Ladies and gentlemen, His Majesty King Abdullah II Ben Hussein, the Supreme Commander of the Jordanian Armed Forces, and His Excellency the President of the Republic of Yemen. Here we go, it's all gonna kick off now. King Abdullah is arriving. Here come some of the special ops forces. Jordan has a profound, almost pathological fixation with special ops. Why? Well, one, because it borders with Syria, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq. And two, because special ops is code for taking down terrorists, insurgents, or anyone else that the government deems to be undesirable. And since 9-11, if you join the fight against global terrorism, it also means that Uncle Sam will cut you a nice big check for weapons, especially if they're American-made. So we just saw the show of force. They took over the building. They dropped the people in. There was a hostage crisis. They did it all. They killed everybody. And now Solfex is going to begin. And if you didn't know that the military industrial complex was a party, you'd be wrong. So we're going to go in with all the generals, see what everybody's buying. It's like a parody. I kind of feel like Austin Powers is going to jump out at some point because it's like a million Dr. Evils getting their special laser weapon systems. It's like a kids at a candy store. Eyes only. I think that's the wrong bond. And it's not just arms you can buy at Sofex. If you make a big enough purchase, they'll train you on just how to use them too. To this end, they've created a state-of-the-art military training facility where you can learn how to raid an airplane or assault a gas station or not freak out while all around you bodies are burning. 
And all of this is brought to you courtesy of General Dynamics. This was a coordinated effort between the U.S. and Jordan. Uh, it's about a $200 million facility as it stands right now, all constructed in the effort to basically have a one-stop shop for special operations type training. So you can come and you can work on your urban skills, you can work on your aircraft assault skills, and uh, just the whole gamut. And who trains on it mostly? Uh, well, a, a number of countries. I won't, I won't say exactly which ones. Uh, what we have here is the Airbus 300. What it allows us to do is uh, various types of training as it relates to special operations, whether it's a hostage situation inside of an aircraft or we want to replicate some sky marshal training. As in the aircraft here, we can simulate certain battlefield effects. We can initiate smells and sounds of the battlefield that may go along with a certain kind of scenario. What we can do is we can pull out the mannequins and actually it's put... Uh, <laughs> Don't put, shoot the baby. That's right. The mindset's a big factor for each operator. And yeah. the more you can expose them to in a controlled environment like this, the better operator he's going to be, the more surgical he's going to be. Right. I understand why, because the baby sound just freaked me out. Yeah. Yeah. This is the 100 meter range, and the 100 meter range has a, a system built by Saab. It's basically a, a pop-up target system. Saab, the car manufacturer? Uh, I, I, yeah, I believe it's the same guy, Saab Systems. Right. I never see any press on this stuff ever. That's why I think I'm sort of a maverick. <laughs> Although not a maverick like John McCain. <laughs> It's such a good story. I mean, right. that, you know, anything that we can do to help, you know, the soldiers that we put out there. I, and just think of it, a site like this tries to replicate any type of situation that uh -huh. they're in. Now, Jennifer does PR for these General Dynamics war villages, which must be the weirdest job for a soccer mom ever created. So they bring people from Sofex here. Why? Oh, to see it. Gotta see it to believe it. So they like it, they, yep. they see the plane, yep. they get afraid by the baby. <laughs> then they go come to you and say, I want it. Now what, what's next? Great, we go and we you know, talk to them and, and say, they either want it in their country yeah. or they can come here and train. Right. We're going in, live hostage situation. Got them all before I even got in. I wonder if the, what the Jordanians think about these guys being the bad guy. We're approaching the urban area. The urban area consists of about 52 structures. The structures range from banks to small, large villas. We have an embassy complex over on the right, gas station, and just all kinds of other structures. There's a machine gun, oh, yeah. simulated machine gun in that window. We have wave cannons on all the rooftops. Are wave cannons real things? They're... <laughs> oh, shit. Is that a wave cannon? It's a wave cannon. <laughs> They're after us. I've been told that in the building they initiated uh, some kind of an odor as well as uh, probably some smoke and so on. I smell something, I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh. This is like the worst thing I could possibly think of right now, being hung over and they're gonna make it smell like rotting flesh. Burnt hair, oily machinery, dead body. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have an apple pie, but we don't have it on the Is there ever a worry that sort of baddies would come and use the area as training? As you know, you have Israel, Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, all as neighbors, and you know, you just wonder, you know, who gets to come train, you know? Well, I mean, Jordan's in a tough neighborhood. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Jordan is in a tough neighborhood. In fact, both Egypt and Syria are currently trying to put down popular rebellions, and Iraq is basically in a full-on special op civil war. 
And where are they getting all these weapons? Sofix. How hard is it to come and buy arms on the open market? For states, it's uh, it's easy. Easy right? for for um, terrorist organization or criminal organization, it's more difficult. But for example, in America, the main uh, supplier of uh, drugs cartel in Mexico are the free market in America. Sure. So, and we noticed that they sell kits. For example, you can buy a regular helicopter, but you can buy a kit to upgrade it to add in a missile system or a, a Gatling gun system quite easily. Yes, of course. It's what we call now uh, dual technology. Mm -hmm. For example, Iran bought this kind of plane right. officially for a commercial uh, operation. But Russians say, we don't sell weapons to Iran, right. we sell Antonov. Right. It's a commercial plane. So I can buy a helicopter from one country, and I can buy a weapon system from another country, and then have an attack helicopter. Yes. Uh, for example, this kind of helicopter, the North Korea, have some some of this kind. So the North Korea has bought some of these. Yes. So it's a uh, pretty scary. Can I have a keychain? Yes. Thank you. Where are you guys from? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Czech Republic. Is that made in Azerbaijan? Yeah. yeah? So Azerbaijan makes the biggest, longest rifle I've ever seen. You, where are you guys from? Germany. Germany. Turkey is here, China's here, Jordan is here, the Russians are here, all selling weapon systems to whoever's, whoever wants to buy them. You want jets, you want rockets, helicopter grenades, Robocop killer systems. You have 20 seconds to comply. You got it. That's an automatic grenade launcher. That's my favorite weapon in the entire Marine Corps arsenal. Dead. No one's stopping, everyone's saying, hey, you shouldn't be actually playing with the grenade launcher. Now, fucking around with these dudes and their guns was fun, but after a while, you start to freak out because you realize that they're selling weapons the same way that you'd sell next year's car model. The world's most demanding shooters demand SIG. This is the world's most revolutionary pistol. We have the resources and the energy to solve uh, any small arms problem. Javelin would be one of the most innovative weapon systems. I'll tell you, it is a hugely successful uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan, not yeah. just in the United States forces, but right. uh, internationally. Now when he says successful, what he really means is that it's great at destroying stuff. And we weren't the only ones to notice, like the Marine we ran into who had just finished his second tour in Iraq. You know, it's weird, man. It's like, everybody's like real cordial with each other. But like at the end of the day, we're like buying weapons to destroy each other. That's it. I don't want to sound too like liberal or anything. No, no. It's really not glamorous. Yeah, they're, they they're yeah, no, people. exactly. It's like they don't discriminate. They'll yeah. sell to anybody who has fucking money. And the biggest sellers by far are the American companies. In fact, 16 of the 20 largest arms manufacturers are based in the United States. And being the biggest store in the mall means selling a lot of weapons to a lot of people. What's crazy about this is that America gives a lot of these countries foreign aid so that they can come here and buy weapon systems from their company. It's kind of like a parent giving their kids a credit card and saying, go to the mall that I own and just buy whatever you want. So the last time you were in the Middle East, you were uh, in Iraq as a Marine. Does it spin you out to see like Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics? You know, like all these American companies making tons of money off of war. You know, what's the trip is you see Norenko right here. Right. Next to an American arms display. And they used to launch nine foot Norenko rockets on us. Really? Yeah. The insurgents would buy Norenko rockets yeah. and then use them against you. And they're right next to the American military yeah. companies. Interesting. So we went over to the Norinko booth to see if they could explain how their weapons ended up in the hands of Iraqi insurgents. Hi. Ni hao. Hey, ni hao. Hi, how are you? Uh, yes, you. where are you from? Uh, from America, Vice. BBS, uh, news. Oh, news. News, news. I'm sorry, uh, uh, maybe I'm not there. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Ni hao. I must have bad BO, they're all walking away very rapidly. Ni hao. Everyone just left. While we couldn't get an answer from the Chinese, 
sitting right there on display in the next booth over were shells that were exactly the same as the ones Iraqi insurgents used to make roadside bombs or IEDs. They take the tips off of these and you can see it's pretty hollow in there and they'll pack this whole thing full of C4 and just it creates some hellacious shrapnel. And here you can just buy it like yeah. you would a chocolate bar. Exactly. We're just outside of Amman, Jordan at the King Abdullah Special Operations Training Center for the Ultimate Warrior Competition. There's some Marines here, there's some Tanzanians here, there's some people from Saudi Arabia, and they're the hometown heroes, the Jordanians. They're part of the special branches. It's basically bragging rights for who's the biggest badasses in the world. And so these are the best of the best counter-terrorist special ops groups. Yes. And so if they win, they're like, we're the biggest badasses, basically. I guess it does give you a little bit of bragging rights. Oh, that's good. So as you can see, it's designed to kind of hit on as, as many, many of the yeah. skill sets that these guys possess and challenge them in all of those stamina, endurance, shooting skills. Do they do Indian leg wrestling? Indian leg wrestling? No, maybe. Because I could, I could compete on that. What about potato sack racing? I could compete on those too. Now I have to admit, watching these special ops guys strut their stuff was pretty impressive. But when you start thinking about the countries that some of these guys come from, you can't help but wonder the circumstances in which these urban assault skills are going to be put to use. And if the recent uprisings in the Arab world are any indication, the answer is simple, at home. How are you guys doing? Good, you're gonna win? Yeah? How are your boys doing, are you gonna win? If they don't win, then I'll put my boot in their ass, I'm happy. <laughs> and what do you think about competitions like this? Friendly competition is always a great thing, so it lets you know what you need to work on, and you shoot out, get meet new people, because uh, connections around the world right now is a big deal, so. Yeah. Getting to know guys you might see down the road in Afghanistan and recognize faces, sure. definitely goes a long way. And recognizing faces is important. In fact, facial recognition technology is just the latest feature being built into many unarmed aerial vehicles, which are also known as drones. You know, when you were a kid, you used to have those little model airplanes, and they'd be like, you know, somebody's dad would be a real nerd and have the model airplane. Now, like, it's all model airplane style drones that can take pictures or drop bombs. The sad thing is that countries who actually buy this stuff rarely end up using it against foreign militaries. More often than not, they're turning it against their own citizens. And thanks to the number of governments who are afraid of their own people, business is booming. We've just made a, an assessment of the global security market spending. Right. And on assessment initiated, we think spending on security is between 180 and 190 billion dollars. We now see that dubbing to 400 billion dollars over the next four billion. years. 400 billion dollars just on? Everything from border security, Homeland Security, anti-immigration, anti-drug, protection of oil fields and everything else. So even in a recession? Yep. So you can see two to three times more on uh, security spending than it's going to be on defense export spending. Wow. Hence the importance of suffix. So we just left Sofax. Uh, we're pretty spun out. A lot of generals, a lot of weapon systems, missiles, tanks, planes, helicopters. And it's kind of a bummer. And as we left Sofax, the magnitude of what we just saw hit us. If the arms markets are doubling every year in sales, it means that the armies are actually using and expending their weapons, which means, quite simply, that they're killing people. Come on, fire!